Whew, it's been a while. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. At this point, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the Ryzen 3 and the Ryzen 5, both the 2200G and the 2400G have both launched. Now, I'm not going to bother you with deep in-depth discussions about the architecture and what it is, because at this point, you probably already know what it is. I mean, it's an ex it's, it's their newest APU, which is a, you know stands for Accelerated Processing Units, where you have the GPU cores on the CPU die. So it's one die all together. So it shares system memory. So you share your uh, system, the DDR4, with the iGPU. So you don't really need a graphics card. So the purpose of this video is to discuss uh, overclocking performance and what it means as far as 1080p gaming. Let's take a quick look at what kind of overclock we got with the iGPU. Now something really important to keep in mind with these APU style processors is that they have a total power envelope. So they are unlocked. It's a 65 watt chip in a 95 plus watt uh, socket, but you can only deliver so much power to it. So the power has to go to the CPU and the iGPU. Now, if you run in a dedicated graphics card, of course you want to overclock that CPU, pump that thing up as hard as you can get it. But if you're looking to game on it, the CPU portion isn't going to be quite as integral as you may think. So whether it's the Ryzen 3 or the Ryzen 5, that's not going to make a whole lot of difference in the gaming performance. The gaming performance difference that you're going to see is the GPU core frequency as well as the core count. So we went with the lighter weight Ryzen 3 first and wanted to see just how far you could go with it when it comes to overclocking and what kind of potential performance you're going to get. So real quick, just to get the numbers on where we ended up with it, we left the CPU portion alone. No reason to change that. Like we said, leave all of the additional power for the uh, the GPU portion. So using our, this is the same test bench that we've been using for our Ryzen set systems. It's the X370 X Power Gaming Titanium running 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz, uh, the, the G scale. Now there is something that we want to take into consideration in just a moment with that memory. But first I do want to say for the iGPU in the BIOS, we changed it to 1600 megahertz up from the 1100 megahertz default to 1600 so it's a 500 megahertz increase on the iGPU and we changed the Northbridge SOC voltage to 1.2 volts which is a more than acceptable number 1.3 is about the highest you want to go on there and 1600 should be about the average that you should expect to see based on what I found looking around online by other users doing the same thing everybody seems to be getting between 1500 and 1600 megahertz if they know what they're doing rather than just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks APUs are just a little bit different, so if you've never really overclocked one, I can understand how this would be a little confusing. So again, with the memory, what's important about this is that for the default settings, because when you see the results, when we're talking about them, there's going to be three sets of results. One is the A12-9800, which is going to represent the previous generation and what kind of performance that it gave. Being that it's a quad core and the same CU count as the Vega 8, but older architecture, we get to see advances in how things have changed. So we've got it running at its default speeds with DDR4-2400. Same RAM kit, just clocked for DDR4-2400 because it's a limitation of that chip. Now the typical setting for the 2200G is running default clocks on the CPU and the GPU, as well as the memory clock. The memory speed is going to be running at its rated 2933 rather than the overclock. Now getting to the overclock portion, it is a combination overclock. It's the GPU and this memory. So GPU is at 1600, memory is at DDR4 3200, and for what it's worth, I had no problem running this particular chip at DDR4 3400 with this kit of RAM, albeit it's quite the expensive kit of RAM. So let's get into the results. So before we get into the gaming stuff, I do want to bring up the Cinebench scores. So at stock on that, the 9800 shows a single core score of 94 Cinebench or CB and then 316 multi. Moving things up to the Ryzen G, uh, the 3200G, which we're going to just refer to it as the 2200G, is a single uh, core speed of 135 and 588. Overclock it and you see it increases quite a bit. So it's significantly faster than the older excavator architecture. Moving into our first and only set of synthetic benchmarks, which is 3D Mark Fire Strike. Now this did give me a bunch of trouble right off the bat, but they updated the, get, the, the game, the benchmark right about the time I got started 
really benching everything and it actually ran just fine. The stock compared to the 9800 isn't that much more impressive as far as the graphics score, but you can see with the overclock applied, it's significantly faster and just an overall much better package than the older excavator architecture, which is one of the reasons we were unfortunately let down by the A12 9800. Now let's move into gaming and see what kind of gaming results we get. I'm going to lean back in my chair and get kind of comfortable for here because we've got 13 titles. We intended on having even more, but due to some issues with the A12 as far as and timing, because you notice you haven't seen me in a while on the channel, I've been in a hotel room. It's been kind of hard to get a good connection to download even more titles and really troubleshoot. So you kind of had to go with what you got. So these 13 titles are not conclusive and these, these just represent a pool of performance. Now, we all know that this chip is more than capable of running Overwatch, Counter-Strike, so I'm not gonna bore you with those numbers again. What we're focusing on here is 1080p medium details, unless otherwise noted, there's a couple titles that were rechanged some of that. But we're looking at 1080p medium settings and seeing can we hit 30 FPS. Now, I know there's somebody out there with the meme, 30 FPS is enough, but this is an iGPU. Point being, if you can hit 1080p medium settings with 30 FPS, if you were to drop it down the resolution to say 720p, which is common for a lot of 32 inch televisions, that's what you might want to use this for, you're going to get much, much better performance. So again, 30 FPS, 1080p, let's get started with these numbers. First off, we've got Grand Theft Auto 5 at normal settings. So 1080p normal settings. We see that the default settings for the Ryzen 3 has it breaking the 60 fps average mark the one percent and 0.1 percent lows may be a little bit concerning but you can see how an overclock would bring those up to well over 30. so even if you were to lock in the v-sync at 30 fps it would stay very smooth so moving on from there we see our first title where well even the overclock isn't going to quite make it it's the witcher 3 at medium presets at 1080p with no hair works of course we see that the overclock did make a significant jump, even though it didn't break that 30 FPS mark. However, with this title, again, dropping it down to 720p, and it becomes perfectly playable. Batman Arkham Knight was probably one of the most surprising games in this lineup, being an Unreal Engine title, as well as some of the issues that it had right out of the gate with as far as running. So we see with the A12, it's quite abysmal. It's really like watching a PowerPoint presentation of the game. Moving up to the 2200G, we see things becoming much more playable, although not quite there yet. However, once you apply the overclock, it really does change the game, and that game, well, Batman Arkham Knight, actually becomes rather playable. Another game where we uh, unfortunately just couldn't quite make it at 1080p is Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Now you see a very sad numbers here, but the truth is this game is not easy to run by any stretch of the imagination. And these tests aren't to so show you how amazing the APU is or try and trash it. It's just a realistic look at these high-end games and the reality of what it would be like if you tried to play them at 1080p medium settings. Now, just a note on Deus Ex Mankind Divided, dropping it down to 720p and hitting low becomes amazingly playable and actually quite enjoyable experience. Uh, Dirt Rally is another game that I was actually surprised to see it respond to the overclock because that game typically doesn't care. It was actually somewhat playable on the A12, but was more than playable on the 2200G, showing you when overclocked, the average goes well over the 60 FPS mark. Now, what about Skyrim? I know it's an older game, but people still do play Skyrim even if it's vanilla Skyrim, but being the age of the game, I could have ran this one at medium, but I wanted to see what would happen if you threw it at ultra settings with anti-aliasing and everything cranked up. Well, might have been a little bit too much because it definitely impacted the 1% or the 0.1% lows. And it was, while the A12 or the 2200G overclocked was significantly faster than the A12, it still showed quite a deficit as far as what the expectations were. Moving into Hellblade, this uh, Hellblade Senua's uh, Sacrifice. This is another title that shows where that overclock does take it from being almost there to hitting the mark, so making it actually playable. Uh, up next on the list is Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, and unfortunately this game could not quite break the 30 FPS barrier. So looking at 26 FPS at the absolute best on the averages at 1080p medium. Now it's worth noticing, noting dropping that title down to 1080p on the lowest settings, put it in the mid 
40s, so about 45 to 50 FPS on average, but it looked like garbage. I actually would rather look, play the game at 720p and look a little blurry, but still have uh, at least some detail and cr crisp textures. So that is that title. Now, Prey. Prey suffered significantly from 0.1% lows until it was overclocked, at which point the average jumped over the 30 FPS mark and the 0.1% lows only dipped just below 20. Resident Evil 7, uh, another title that went from almost there to, well, it's there. Overclocked on the Ryzen 3, uh, put it in a perfectly playable scenario. And Civilization 6 at 1080p medium didn't really care about the overclock whatsoever. You gained one FPS on the average, showing probably the worst gains of any title that we looked at. Moving into a quite surprising one is Far Cry 4. With the upcoming Far Cry 5 launch, I felt this one may be interesting to take a look at, even though it's not going to tell you how Far Cry 5 runs. It's just, well, you know, it, it was there. And uh, that overclock didn't do a lot for the 0.1% lows, which tended to happen as the test run that I had. You were going from inside to outside and there was, I guess, a loading and maybe it just hitched right there. Either way, it seemed to be consistent. And the average FPS took quite a jump over 40 FPS. So the last title is Ghost Recon Wildlands. And unfortunately, once it was overclocked, it was the only game that was, well, it was unstable. It just, as soon as it would load into a 3D load, it would just, it was off. So uh, that's up for debate whether you would consider that a stable overclock or not because it worked in every single title but that one. And looking at the numbers, quite honestly, you're not going to be playing Ghost Recon Wildlands at 1080p with this. So at the end of the day and 12 minutes later into the recording, what have we learned? Well, no, I wouldn't really consider the, a, the Ryzen 3 2200G with the Vega 8 GPU to be a 1080p powerhouse and a great replacement for a dedicated graphics card. However, you're going to get those esports games and you're going to play them great. But what this did show me was there are a lot of games that you're going to be able to play over 30 FPS at 1080p. Now, I know there's going to be people going, Keith, if it's not 60 FPS, I don't want to be playing it. I get that. But this is definitely not a product for you because you have the budget for something much better. This is for somebody getting into PC gaming or building an HTPC. Again, like I said, these titles at 720p, they were all perfectly playable. And there are quite a few, say, 32-inch 1080p TVs that would be going into dorm rooms or extra rooms and you're building a small uh, computer to go with it. Now, I'm not here to tell you whether it's good or bad. That's up to you to, sell me if it, to, to tell yourself whether these numbers are something that you're happy with. But what we are going to be doing is, since we just got it in and I haven't even had a chance to take it out of the box, is our Ryzen 5 2400G. We're going to be doing a full build. It's going to stay here on the desk, and that is going to be our dedicated Canon APU system going forward. We're going to build a database with performance of all of the games that we have, and actually want to take some of your requests as far as what kind of games you want us to see us perform. And whenever that database gets done, we'll drop a link in the description below, and it'll be an ever-growing database with performance results as well as videos showing how well it runs. Well, anything else you want to know? If you have questions, feel free to drop them in the description below. If you want an overclocking guide for the Ryzen APUs to show you guys how easy it is to get up to over 1500 megahertz on the iGPU, which I highly recommend doing. Well, not the comment, but the overclocking part. It's up to you whether you leave the comment or not. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Sorry for the video running so long. Had a lot to say, had a lot of results to talk about, and we will catch you all in the next video.